Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a sit down video where I share with you guys some of the things that I learned over five years of being an aerospace engineer in the space industry. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Avier. Hi, welcome. I am an aerospace engineer and I work in the space industry as a space systems engineer. I've been working as an engineer for almost five years now, excluding my internship experience. And I feel like I've learned a lot of, and there's a lot of things that I didn't really know before joining and I thought it would be a good time to share this information with you guys. Cat is crying at the door. Hold on, let me get him in. All right, he's in. Smokey, why are you crying? Okay, so I wrote some notes down so that I don't forget. Um, so I might be looking at my phone a little bit. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about is negotiating your salary. So I know that salary negotiations are like such a really difficult topic to talk about and salary in general is a very taboo thing and I think it shouldn't be. I don't really shy away from talking about my salary. If a coworker asked, I would definitely tell them because I feel like it's important to know where you stand compared to your peers. But the one important thing that I learned is that if you don't negotiate your salary in the beginning, that will definitely hurt you in the future. The initial offer you accept when you're hired into a company really sets the tone for the remaining salary compensations or like increases you're going to have in the future. Uh, think about it this way. I personally, when I got my first full-time job ever, I did negotiate my salary by like $8,000 more. And um, I realized when I started working with my peers, so the same position, some of them took the bare minimum that was offered. So whenever we had merit increases or when we got promoted for the same specific position, like it's the exact same position, I was getting paid more than them because when you get promoted or you get a merit increase, your um, salary increases by percentage. So let's say like 10%, whatever percent. And that's based on your base salary. So I'll just give you an example. If your base salary is 50k and my base salary is, I don't know, 58k, of course a 10% increase for me and you is going to be very different even though it's the same increase. So negotiating your salary is extremely, extremely, extremely important. And I always tell people this, that when you get an offer at a company, never just say, okay, thank you, I'll take that. Always negotiate. Ask for more. The worst they can say is no. And then you can determine whether you want to go with that salary or just go with another company. Um, if you guys want me to make a video about how to negotiate your salary, please let me know in the comments below and I will try to do it. Uh, okay, the second thing I really wanted to talk about is your manager. So your manager in corporate America in general, this is probably not specific only to the aerospace industry, but if you work for a large company, this probably applies to you. Your manager is extremely, extremely important. Your manager could cost you career development opportunities, uh, they could cost you promotions. So I know a lot of times you don't really have the say on who is your manager, but your manager really breaks or makes your kind of time or career with the company. Um, I personally, for example, I'm not, I don't want to talk crap about my manager. I'm pretty sure he was a great person, but he was horrible at people management. My first ever manager when I accepted the, my full, ever first full-time position. He was never present never did 101s like he had no idea what i was working on most of the time he knew the program that i was working on but didn't really know what i was doing like particularly my day-to-day -day tasks um one time we had a end of year review or like i think a mid of year review he just updated the system without even scheduling like a meeting with me to talk about what i did or like nothing he just like checked it off and was like oh it's done um very horrible thing to do as a manager so i know you cannot control your managers but uh if you find yourself in a position where you have a horrible manager here's what i'm gonna suggest don't be rude don't get on their bad side because that honestly doesn't help anyone i think the best thing you can do is be more proactive advocate for yourself uh, make sure that you're making the one-on-ones like make them do their job pretty much without being annoying right because you don't want to get on their bad side um keep them updated uh yeah schedule your 101s like just be very proactive that way they're kind of forced to do their job it's the only way i can do it or you could just switch groups 
if you like a manager, other like if you like someone specifically, you can just ask to switch to their group and see if you can be under them. Usually that doesn't really work all the time, but for me it worked. Okay, so that brings me to my next point that is kind of related. It is really, really important to be proactive in your position. Um, just doing your job won't cut it. You're not gonna get promoted. You're not gonna get recognized if you're just going to work, doing your job and taking your paycheck. If that's what you want, by all means go for it. But if you're like me and you wanna like climb the corporate ladder and be like recognized and be involved, I really, really recommend you be very, very proactive advocate for yourself smoking no and make sure that people people know who you are um smoky what are you being a bad boy stop some examples i might give you um i understand that sometimes you just want to do what's assigned to you but a lot of times i would put myself in situations where i'm kind of saying okay oh that that looks interesting can i work on that for example, it might put a little bit more work on my plate, but if I am excited about a project or I think that's going to help further develop my career, I would totally go for it. Um, this I've done this a lot throughout my career, and that helped me like gain recognition. Like, usually companies have systems where you can get recognized, right? You know, it's like part of they give you money, of course, but like they also like give you a little prize that says so-and-so is recognized for their excellence or whatever these things are really important to me because you can leverage them later on at the end of the year when you're doing your your discussion with your manager about getting promoted or getting like a higher merit increase you can be like hey well this year i was proactive and i accomplished this and this and that and that like makes your case a little bit stronger okay next thing that i recommend is to keep a brag sheet so a brag sheet is something that i call Kind of like a document where i keep all of the things that i worked on it's not complicated i don't write every single detail but i kind of highlight tldr the main things that i worked on um, i mentioned what i accomplished who i worked with um, how big of a project it was if we save time or money specify how much of time or how much of money we saved and this practice is really really important because i realized in the beginning i wasn't doing that and at the end of the year i was kind of forgetting what i did i was like what did i do like when it was time to talk about what i accomplished throughout the year i'm like oh, i don't remember so i started writing like keeping a brag sheet i update it like once a month or sometimes once a quarter depending how long my project is but i recommend to do it once a month uh, or when you finish a project or you finish a task like a very big task i'm not talking about very menial tasks i'm talking about like big like tasks that you think are important uh, it also helps when you're trying to update your resume because sometimes i feel like oh okay i'm looking for, to, for another position um and when i'm trying to update my resume i might forget like what did i do uh, having that brag sheet really really helps so i recommend you do that keep a brag sheet okay this next one is somewhat specific to the aerospace industry um the aerospace industry is very top heavy meaning there's a lot of older people in the industry and those older people will usually have all the secret sauce a lot of them have 20 plus years of experience in the industry they worked on numerous projects numerous nasa contracts and i think that's where all the information is you'd be surprised a lot of times a lot of these things are not written down anywhere they're just in their heads so i really recommend you make friends with the principal engineers the senior principal engineers ask them to mentor you talk to them about things that they worked on what they learned like their lesson learned um what they would recommend you as a young engineer like how to get to where you want to get in the future um one thing to keep in mind is a lot of them are very stuck in their old ways so you might not agree on some things but i think the most important thing you can do is make sure you are respectful um and just learn okay last but not least um know when to quit unfortunately in the airspace industry i don't know if this is similar to other engineering industries but in the aerospace industry the biggest raise you could get is by moving companies um which is very unfortunate because unfortunately when you you know just kind of get promoted you might get a 10 percent raise or like 12 percent. but when you switch companies sometimes it's you can double your income and i have experienced that um and 
I don't really recommend you switch jobs like after a year or two usually three years is kind of a sweet spot because that's when you've had a chance to see a project to completion um, and just know when to say okay well I've learned enough from this company and it's time for me to move on and I think a lot of people don't talk about that it's somewhat of a taboo but unfortunately that's just the case in the aerospace industry and sometimes when you say that you're gonna leave for another company the company you're working for might say no no please no don't leave and they were like I'm gonna give you more I don't know why they do that to be honest I feel like the most important thing is try to retain talent so if you really think a certain employee is like good you would do everything you possibly can to keep them however sometimes I'm not saying all companies because I haven't worked for all of them but sometimes they won't do that until you say okay I'm ready to leave and sometimes it's way too late I'm like okay I don't want I don't want your your scraps like I'm done like I've already been through all of the the interviews and I found another company like I don't want to kind of all that to go to waste so yeah keep that in mind um, I think do not jump I'm not saying like jump from one company to another every year but I'm saying sometimes once you hit that three years or like five year mark you might need to think about making the switch because that would be the only time where your salary has potential of growing a lot um, yeah Anyways, um, that was pretty much all. I just wanted to keep it sweet and short. Please let me know if you found any of these helpful and if you want me to continue to make videos like these, please like button and subscribe. Um, follow me on your socials. I will leave them in the link down below. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. Bye.